Good morning, I'm Jason Stokes, Fox Rage Consultant, and you join me here today to uh, try something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be fishing the pit in front of me using the drifter float method, which is not widely used for some unknown reason. Um, it is a little bit more technical than it is normally, a normal float setup, but hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to be able to use the tips and tricks I'll show you, and you use it a lot more confident yourself. Um, I'll go through later on the reasons why I'm using it and the ways and techniques and all the technical side of the of the method um, and then hopefully you'll be able to use that yourself later on. So why use a drifter float setup? And the main reason is to get your bait to areas you cannot cast to. Effectively, it's like using a, a little mini sail, which is naturally using the wind to get your bait out further than you can cast. In effect, a bit like a bait boat, but using the float itself to get the bait out there for you. The drifter float setup is quite a technical method because you have to be on the rods at all times. Now you can use this float to cover that many lines out in front of you because you've always got a moving bait. And in effect, if you keep moving swims and moving the distance of your float, you can actually cover a lot of water and a lot of fish as well, making this a really effective method if the conditions are right. So what to set up for a drifter float? It's as simple as it gets, really. You have first put a braid stop on, and straight out of the packet, thread your blade, through the stabiliser arm, to a buffer bead, straight to an egg sinker and then to a quick link. Now the buffer bead is quite important, it just protects the plastic stem which is attached to the stabilising arm and then an egg sinker and the reason for the egg sinker is obviously it just keeps all the rigs straight when you're casting and obviously cocks the float ready because obviously if you've got a smaller, smaller dead bit on like a small a four ounce roach, it's not going to probably enough to stabilise and cock that effectively. So that's really important is to put an egg sinker on. And then straight to a quick link, like any dead bait rig, just makes it nice and easy and simple for taking off when you're unhooking and for when you're baiting up fish. And then straight to a two size eight, trebles, ready made trace, straight into your dead bait. And that's it, that's effectively it. There's nothing much more to the rig than that. It's really easy to fish and very effective as well. So on this setup you have an optional stabilising arm. I highly recommend this because it keeps your braid away from the float reducing tangles when it's out there and on the cast as well. Uh, this vein itself is quite concaved which obviously helps catch the wind which sends the bait around even it doesn't take that much wind to make this move. And this is basically how it sits in the water plastic stem comes up off the swivel to the black foam egg up to the vein and this is what keeps your, egg, your, your vein stood up straight like that and then when you get a bite this will disappear beneath the surface and you should be into a fish. The most difficult part of this rig is probably the casting for most people. Now my best advice would be just to keep it nice and simple. A nice long sweeping arc when you, when you cast. Now, any, well I could any rig that's got two separate weights on it. You've got to have your float up here, your egg sinker down here with your bait, and when you cast you're going to want to find it's going to go like that. Now by doing a long sweeping arc, you're keeping that bait and the rig itself nice and straight and smooth. When it goes through the air, what happens is the egg sink will keep your bait well away from the float and it'll hit the water first. Once your float's hit the water, this will stand up and on the stem itself has got a built-in swivel. Now this is very important because it allows the vein to turn and, and catch the direction of wind on the particular day you're fishing. So for me, the most important thing is, is to keep it smooth, keep it tight, and once your float's in the water, it will settle itself down turn itself to the wind and that's it, you're fishing.
When you're fishing a drifter float, you're doing exactly that. You're drifting a bait through the water. So there's two main factors you need to take into account. The first one being the depth. Now you can find the depth using various methods, either a, a, a marker float, leading around, or using a mobile fish phone like I have today, which is the deeper. Um, a general starting point is to fish two thirds of the depth you've got. So if you've got 15 feet, you'd fish at 10, or 12 feet, you'd fish at eight. That's what I normally start with. And then as you go through the day, if you find you're not getting any bites, you can raise your bait, you can lower the bait. And that's the best way of covering the water you've got. Now, the second main thing is how you hook your dead baits. Now, because you, you're suspending the dead bait rather than having it ledged or on the bottom, anything like that, you want to fish, hook your dead baits so your bait is sat like this. So it looks a lot more natural than to say if it was like that or like that. Now to do this, you use your first treble and you come through the top with your bait like that and then your second treble, I hook it just under the pectoral fin. So when your rig's sat in the water, the bait fish is a lot more natural so it looks like a fish that's swimming or just suspended. Well, that was a rock hard day. Conditions have just got worse, to be honest with you. It's been flat calm, we've had bright skies. It's not good for any pike fishing conditions, never alone drift or float fishing. But hopefully, from the video today, you're gonna learn, learn enough to take all this on board and try it yourself on your own waters and unlock a little bit more water that you wouldn't be able to reach before on a standard float setup. And now I think it's time to call it a day.